let's just uh, jump right into it. We're in season three after two spectacular groundbreaking seasons uh, with Viva. How does it feel to to be doing this this final season of, of a show that's just it's it's something else, uh, something beautiful and different from anything else on television? Uh, I mean, we're really just in a position of gratitude, really. I mean, we obviously would have loved to have continued on, but we have three great seasons. And I, I haven't seen this third season. I've seen two episodes. <clears throat> we obviously shot it. So I feel like it's great. I feel like, um, I, you know, in reading the scripts, I think that they're really wonderful. And I think we really opened the door for a lot of incredible conversations this season. And and um you know we're we're looking looking at this as a transition be that is is what it is but what is it going to open the doors for and it's it's that's what feels really cool about it that we're getting to we're seeing the world now than it was even what two years ago when the show first premiered two and a half years ago is so different. I mean, obviously the world, what's happening now is a little different, but also just like the, right. the way that content is being created, the conversations that are being had, the the acceptance of certain types of people and voices and all of that stuff. So I'd like to think we have even just a small part in, in bringing in where we are now. And, um, what, how would you say your character has, the world has changed, how has your character changed, you would say, in this third season in comparison to the first season? Because in that first season, uh, you captured that personality so well, and as, I mean, as someone who, someone Latino who lives in East LA, you know, what I loved about the show is you can recognize everyone oh, yeah. in this, in this, in this show. These are people that, you know, you meet every day. But how has she changed in from the first season? I mean, to the she's season? she's almost a different person. Uh, I mean, she's obviously still her. I feel like she's still operating, you know, with the same fabric and texture. But there's there's been growth and there's been acceptance. And she, you know, that first season, she's trying to get in and get out. She's trying to leave that neighborhood. She's just like, no, the, not today. This is not who I am. I need to get back to the life that I've created for myself, which she was never really happy in it, but it, it gave her this stability and this idea of who she was. And, and then in deciding to stay, then not being accepted by the neighborhood, they're like, who do you think you are? Like you've become white. This is not, you're not, you're not part of us. Like, and you don't, and the truth of it is the neighborhood has changed too. So it's like, there's a whole, so even though she's like, this is my, my neighborhood this is my hood. It's like, it is still a little bit, it's changed. Um, and is still changing. So that, I think, you know, there's like that second version. And then with this third version of her, it really is her accepting her past and accepting her sister and trusting a little bit more in kind of the process of life rather than feeling like she needs to fight it. Because, you know, you, you, I don't know, like, at least I know how I grew up. Like, I, I grew up having to fight all the time. Like, not so much physically, maybe like once. But, um, but like, you know, just having to like, like, be like this, I belong here, I'm coming here, I'm not leaving, I'm not that. And, and that served her for so long. Um, but now, what does it look like if she just allows things to be and to accept and not feel the need to fight and just exist and be who she is and not have to fight for it be like i am who i am and that is it i don't care if you don't accept me if you're not this is who i am um and i think with her latinidad we see that with her queerness we see that with her place in the family we see that uh so it's you know it's been it's been it's been a fun ride and uh uh what do you hope um non-latinx audiences get when they see the show because one value of vida is that it it provides a window in television that you you've never seen before in terms of the Latinx experience, in terms of yeah. queerness, non-binary living, um, the clash between the old yep. school Latinx community and then the and then the emerging millennial community. What do you hope the non-Latinx viewer gets out of Vida when they I watch it? I think I I really look at Vida as an invitation 
It's an invitation to the living rooms and the bedrooms and the bars and the restaurants um, in a way that you might not get normally invited to if this isn't your neighborhood, if this isn't your life, um, because it feels that way. Sometimes it feels almost like you've been, that's why, you know, the Spanglish, it isn't translated because if you were invited in someone's house and you're eating the flan and they start arguing and maybe they're, maybe they're not really arguing, but it's like half Spanish, half English. And you're like, I kind of get what's happening. Should I leave? Should I stay? Is it fine? You know, and I feel like Vila gives you that feeling, right? Where you're just like, oh, this just took a quick turn. And, um, and, and I hope that they, they feel invited into our living rooms and invited into our houses as if they were, you know, invited to, to dinner um, or and to hang out. And I think also something that's really beautiful going, falling in line with this idea of representation. Um, I think it is important for us to see ourselves represented, us to see ourselves seen and us to see ourselves in positions of power, but also positions of growing, like where it's not always easy, it's okay to fail, you're allowed to make mistakes, but that's also part of growing and, and making a mistake doesn't mean that you're a horrible person. Uh, so I think that that's important, but it's also important for the non-Latinx people to see us in that way, Be just to, because then it just becomes something that feels normal. It's not something that feels strange or something that they're fighting for. It's like, no, this is, Yes, like you can be a businesswoman that didn't grow up with any money and come back to your neighborhood and 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 fail and succeed and that doesn't make that doesn't make you any less of a person and I think I want them to see themselves within us the way that we've had to do for so long. Um, so as far as for the non Latinx viewer, that's my that's my little manifesto dream for for everybody. No, perfect. And uh, if we could also uh, segue then into what it's been like working with uh, this cast, uh, with these showrunners, because, um, I mean, the, the talent all around is just off the wall. So uh, what's it been like these uh, last three uh, seasons and how has your relationship developed with uh, your fellow cast and with the show run. I feel like we have like an unhealthy attachment to each other. Like I really, like we <laughs> are, I mean, I came in to this show through a job and I'm leaving with a family, like a really big family. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I mean, we are on a, we're on group texts, group chats, everything. I mean, I've, literally every single day we're writing to each other on one platform or another. Um, and I mean, that's, that's the best thing, right? Because that's, that's familia. And, and we feel that way. And it doesn't matter if it's, you're the series regular, you're the guy that only had two episodes. I mean, we all hang out. Like everybody's birthday, we show up every, you know, if, if we can to each other's premieres. And I hope that, that, that continues on. Actually, I don't even want to say I hope. I know it is. I honestly, even if I wanted it to stop, it's not going to stop. These people are in my life forever. <laughs> Till it gets really weird. <laughs> That, I mean, that's uh, that's the beauty of television, too, right? That camaraderie yes. that forms after you've been doing so many episodes um, together. And um, what would you say uh, has been um, I don't, one of the most difficult or challenging aspects of, of doing Vida as an artist? What's What's been, what have you found to be the most challenging element in bringing to life this character? There's, I mean, as an actor... Uh... Uh, there's always a lot of challenges in, in finding those parts of you. And I think someone like Emma, you know, she, she's had a lot of pain in her life and she operates with a lot of that. And I think for mm. myself, I know it's not always easy to revisit those parts of you that you feel are so soft and so um, maybe you're ashamed of, or maybe you've been hurt. And you, you, it's easier just to be like, I'm not even going to go there anymore. I want to live a happy life. And, and with Emma, I think that really, you know, it, it, it is that. Like even the times that she has panic attacks, I think there's two like legit panic attacks. And I used to have panic attacks and I mm. fully like had panic attacks while we were shooting, like on, like, so a lot of those scenes when I'm having that, um, especially the one uh, in season two where she finds the 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 um, credit card receipts 
by the time we're outside, like that was like really like there was there was no resting in between takes. Like I was really experiencing that mm. in a way that I didn't even know I still could anymore. Um, I'm like, I got that. I'm, I don't that doesn't happen anymore. And then feeling yeah. <laughs> going home just like, OK, um, so that stuff's kind of hard, <laughs> you know, bringing bringing that up. <laughs> But you know, we we do it for the craft. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I mean, was there? You just mentioned panic attacks. I mean, was there like a specific scene you can you can remember where where uh, did any of that make it on yeah, film? Yeah, no, the I, one I mean, uh, the scene where um, after I find out about the credit card receipts and I have to go outside and I'm like leaning against the tree and I see the little girl who is the ghost that I've been seeing painted on the wall. Like that was full on uh, in a way that oh. I didn't expect. I was not, you know, I was just trying to kind of channel whatever it was. And, um, but yeah, you know, it's just, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's what we do, I guess. All for the art. All for the <laughs> art. <laughs> and all for the art. But it, no, and, and, and what's um, really great as... about something like that really quick is just also, to feel supported because I remember even then feeling like, oh, wow, this is real. Like, this is real. I didn't expect this to be real. And all of a sudden mm. feeling Roberta kind of put her hand over and hold mine. And it helped feel mm. me feel grounded. And that's like, an, you know, kind of going back to the cast that it, it still like I can feel that feeling of her grabbing my hand and not even like talking to me and just holding me in that space. Um, and I think that that's part of, I mean, we do that a lot for each other on, on, on the, I mean, Melissa's done that for me and I don't know, it's help. It helps. <laughs> so you're not alone in the crazy. And, um, if you could, if we could segue into that and, uh, if we could use that to segue into your, um, your sister on yeah. the show, right. Uh, how has that dynamic evolved since season one? Um, you know, on on screen we see that 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 uh, that tension and that love as sisters, and then off screen, uh, you know, how how did that uh, trend? I mean, did did you become closer? Did uh, um, did did uh, what were the dynamics off screen uh, after doing yeah, it? in front I of the camera? I feel like we. I mean, the dynamic is probably pretty similar. We we really hit it off pretty quickly. And, you know, I felt really supported by her as um, as an actor and uh, as a scene partner. I mean, I love the scenes that I get to do with her. And I think we really made a commitment to, to be there for each other. Uh, so even, you know, when you're off screen and giving the lines, like still making sure that you're, I mean, I, I, you always feel like your best performance actually is when it's off screen because nobody's watching you. But um but yeah, so I feel like it feels kind of this, an extension of what we, because we started off so strongly and um, really fell in love with each other in a way that was really, really fun. I mean, you know, many didn't have any friends here and I had kind of come from my just, you know, I, I knew people, but it was just kind of this, this world was just different. I hadn't had any other acting jobs in this way and, mm. and TV. So we were really like, we were experiencing it together our first time doing mm. a show like this together. Um, and, and I think it's, it's, it's great because I, 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 I like seeing our chemistry on screen together. I think it really, it's not something you just see. It's something that you feel. Hmm. And what would you <clears throat> also say are the, uh, major challenges, uh, for, uh, just Latinx artists in general to really break into the industry these days, because obviously we're becoming more um, known in the mainstream, right? Yeah. Which is kind of funny, especially in a city named Los Angeles, right? But um, what would you say are, are the still the stereotypes we have to break and the, the challenges that we face? I think, I mean, some of the challenges I think is still tokenism where let's say, you know, they're gathering a group of artists that are like, oh, well, we already have one Latinx artist. So now we need a Asian one or we need a whatever. Why can't there be three? And then, you know, why, why is it still like collect, collect all five? Uh, I, I feel like I still see that a bit. And I think one of the biggest challenges that I think is also us giving ourselves permission 
not waiting for somebody else to tell us this is this is okay you belong here knowing you belong there and if they don't let you into the house build your own damn house and i think mm -hmm. that is part of the challenges sometimes because it's it's hard you know if, if consistently you feel like you're being told you don't fit in you're not good enough then you're you know you, that that chips into your subconscious and i think if we can just mm -hmm give ourselves permission and know that that our stories are important nobody can stop us and supporting each other really it's not it's not a competition it's uh, i mean our the 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 struggle isn't against each other it's it's something much bigger and if we can bind together we're going to be way stronger than if we're trying to tear each other apart and go full crabs in a bucket cuz that's just it's not the way to go Totally agree. And uh, last question: What do you got coming up next after Vida? Well, what's 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 next on the, <laughs> on the roster? I mean, right now it's really about slowing down, which has been interesting because I think we're always, uh, you know, we're always working on something, but trying to build whatever the next thing and build the momentum. And you know, there was mm -hmm. before this stuff went down, there was like a lot of stuff kind of in the mix and possibilities and whatnot. And now we're right. just slowing down. Nobody's working as you know much. So, so that's kind of where I've been is really just in the now. I mean, I, I was meant to finish a few episodes of Riverdale. Um, when this all happened, I actually was on mm. a plane, uh, to finish, uh, my last episodes and then landed and within a few hours, uh, was told that they were shutting down production and I had to fly back to the U S. Oh, and it was, oh man, and I love that show. I love you on that show yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> and then that was that was the day that um, uh, that they closed down like the European travel. So like the so I was like on a plane mm. like oh, in man. coronavirus time, just being like, okay, I don't know what's happening, but I'm on a plane. And I'm like, they're like, get back to the U.S. We don't know what's happening, and I was like, ah. so um, so you know, I'll come, I'll go back and shoot shoot. Some more Riverdale, I'm sure, at some point. Um, but right now, it's just about making sure that we're safe and, you know, just taking the time to write. And I want to move into producing, so I'm working on some of the, those things. Um, oh, and just be part of content creating because that's, you know, like I said, that's where we're at our strongest. So we get to tell our own stories. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. Exactly. Well. Thank you so much, Michelle, and Thank you. congrats again on this and all the Thank great you so work much. you do. And uh, hopefully, we'll hopefully we'll speak soon for the next yeah. big project that uh, 